Hi friends, how's it going? Today I'm talking about something very fun, which is lighting. <laughs> Was that so cringy? Wait. Okay, so let me start by saying that very few things in architecture and interiors are as important or as fun as lighting. Like if you're unsure why your space is feeling a little off, literally I'm telling you, just add a few lamps. I don't think I've ever seen an interior that I felt like had too many lamps. Too much light for sure, but never too many lamps. If your space is feeling like incomplete or like just not totally there where you'd want it to be design-wise, go out, get multiple nice, soft, glowy lamps, put them all over, and then if it still feels weird, come back to me because lamps solve almost all problems. Any like table or surface or counter or shelf that you have consider putting like a little lamp there because it can go a really long way. Don't be afraid, you know, to hang a sconce on a wall or a pendant in the corner of a room or even the floor might be a perfect place for a lamp. Like, maximize your lamps, okay? Lamps are always a good idea. You might have a lamp or two in your space and like think you're good. No, two lamps is like actually only a start. You need as many light sources as possible in a space especially because that allows you to kind of customize the light quality based on the time of day or like what you're doing. In Troy Sivan's Architectural Digest tour, he talks about how he and uh, his design team that he worked with, Flax Studio, really wanted to create a soup of light. And I don't think words have ever resonated with me more as a designer. Like that's exactly what we're going for. We want multiple layers of light that are really intentionally considered and they come together to create like the perfect vibe. So without further ado, allow me to dive into all of my detailed thoughts about lighting and interior design. Okay, I think just like overall big picture concept, I think a lot of people overlook what lamps are for when they're designing their home. It's silly that I need to say this, but lamps are for lighting a space. The design of a lamp should be concerned with giving off light. In my opinion, lamps that are functioning first as like a decorative object and second as a lamp are just really in bad taste because they're effectively entirely disregarding the purpose of a lamp, which is, again, to light a space. So generally, designers will tell you there's three kinds of lighting. Ambient light, which is just like the overall lighting of a room. Task lighting, which is lighting a specific area to perform a task, like a kitchen counter or a desk. And then there's accent lighting, which is light that's meant to highlight a specific feature, like maybe a piece of art or a plant or a bookcase or something like that. I think it's pretty hard to mess up task lighting or accent lighting because it's already pretty clear like what the purpose of those light sources is. But I guess where people go wrong pretty often is with ambient light, like just like lighting up a space. A lot of you have probably heard of this idea on the internet of the big light, like we don't use the big light. And I think it's really cute that people are like picking up on this feeling. Basically what it's referring to is like the builder grade down lighting that is in almost every home that nobody looks good in and it just instantly kills a vibe. In general, I think the big light should only be used during the day to sort of balance out the daylight coming in from outside. And also the big light can be thoughtfully designed. Like if you happen to be doing a renovation or building a house right now, so fun if you are, I'm jealous. Um, I really want to urge you to think critically about the lighting plan of your ceiling because I think a lot of people's instinct is just to put in evenly spaced recessed can lights throughout their home and I think that's just like a pretty thoughtless move. Like this is sort of just entirely overlooking how lighting works. Like these lights are much more effective when they're lighting a surface, like the wall at the edge of a room. This is a really effective way to create like a nice soft even light throughout your space. That's why you'll notice that in really thoughtfully designed, professionally designed spaces, like a home that used an interior designer or maybe even a lighting designer, a lot of times the ceiling plan will look like this, where the lights are intentionally lighting the wall at the edge of the room. And if your room is too big, like it won't be properly lit just by lighting the walls at the edge of the space, then you should incorporate fixtures in the center of your room that either give like a really even glow or potentially even uplight the ceiling because that's going to give a much nicer even ambient light 
quality. One of my best friends actually recently bought her first apartment and she's doing a really budget conscious light renovation. And the building that her apartment is in is actually a concrete structure. So the lights aren't even recessed. They're just kind of dangling like this far from the ceiling. And in her living space and bedroom, she's swapping those out for some cool pendants. But in her hallway, what I recommended her to do was actually swap out the fixtures for something like this that directs the light to the wall. And when those were put in, it like even blew my mind how much nicer and more high-end the apartment felt because it's a thoughtful consideration of light. So if it's at all possible, I would really recommend not putting in like recessed down lighting and instead putting in like fixtures that are thoughtfully directing the light to a surface because like just looking at this lamp we don't care about the light that's just coming out and is going to hit you directly we care about the light that's bouncing off of the surface that's going to give like a much nicer more comfortable feeling if you take one thing away from this video, please let it be this. When you're looking at a lamp, don't look at it as like a decorative object or a sculpture or a piece of art. Look at the actual light that it's emitting and how that affects your space because that's what's actually gonna have the impact. Like consider if the light being emitted is more of like a soft glow or like a harsh direct light or how is the light being manipulated or shaped or directed or and this brings me really nicely into something else I want to talk about. Uh, what color is the light? So let's talk about colored light and color temperature. I feel like this is pretty obvious if you've ever heard a designer or anybody talk about lighting. Um, so I'm not going to talk about it that much, but I do need to mention it. Because uh, in case you haven't heard about it, it's important. Every lamp or light bulb has a color temperature that's measured in Kelvin. So it's usually ranging from like at the lowest around 1800 kelvin which gives off like a very orange soft glowing light and that ranges all the way up to i think around 6000 kelvin or maybe even higher which is like daylight which is actually really blue and feels pretty uncomfortable in an interior space like maybe when you've bought light bulbs in the past you've noticed that they're labeled with like warm white or daylight uh to describe their color but instead of like trusting those words, you can actually just look at the specs and look at the color temperature uh, to get a really precise understanding of what color the lamp will be. I personally like to stick like around 3000. I think lower than 2000 Kelvin starts to feel very, very orange and I would only use it in like a very particular condition. Uh, and over 4000 Kelvin definitely is like way too cold and uncomfortable for me. I think that color temperature should only be used in like an industrial warehouse that needs like a daylight condition from electric lighting. Also on the note of color, I would really avoid buying colored lamps. Really often at flea markets, I've seen like some really cool vintage lamps that have like a green or a blue lampshade. And I feel like that sounds really cool like conceptually, but when you actually plug them in, it just gets like a really uncomfortable vibe so i think it might be okay if the lampshade is like red or orange but if you're moving into a cooler color i really don't think it's a good idea so take this as a warning and skip the lamps that have like a really saturated lampshade color i think that colored light just feels like pretty gimmicky and like it takes over a space really quickly and also don't use colored light bulbs it's just not a good look it feels weird okay Okay, now that I've laid out my ideas around lighting and interior design, I'm going to run through some of my design icks that probably won't surprise you if you're paying attention or you understand me at all. <laughs> okay, the first thing is lamps with unnecessary ornament. Lamps that are like a decorative object, like I mentioned. If you understand my like theory or approach to design at all, this won't surprise you, but I still need to say it because it's very common. A lot of people tend to buy lamps like this, and I just think it's not a good move, especially if it's contemporary and not like a vintage piece. Like, please do not go to a big box store and buy a lamp that looks like this. Please. Okay, and this next one, I think you guys are probably expecting, and that is the boob light. Let me just say, I think the first person that designed this had no way to know how hated these lights would become. I mean, there's the obvious issue with how they look, but 
they do give off like a pretty even quality of light and if you think about what i was saying with can lights i understand why these are like a better solution but just really often they have that like kind of like ornate ridge around them and it just feels so wrong to me it's really giving like 2000s tuscan suburbia vibes and i really hate it but if you live in a home that has these don't worry because there are so many alternatives that are really really nice looking that you can really easily swap out they're going to give off the same quality of light so just still be sure not to use them as your primary light source like in the evening you need to bring in other lamps but these alternatives are just so much better and not the same kind of eyesore as those fixtures but yeah regardless of what your big light looks like please do not use it at nighttime at nighttime we switch into lamps okay remember that okay my next lighting design ick is exposed light bulbs i'm gonna say this as plainly as possible very rarely should a lamp have an exposed light bulb very rarely should you be able to see a light bulb it just is such a painful waste of the opportunity to use lighting in an interesting way like for example if you're choosing a pendant to hang above your dining room table choosing a fixture like this that's just like some sort of decorative shape around an exposed light bulb is such a weird move to me like you had the opportunity to have like a really nice glow or direct the lighting down onto the table or something to manipulate the light in an intentional way and instead you just have this like decorative framework like a cage around your light bulb that's not doing anything to the light it's very very strange to me i do not like it at all okay and also within the category of exposed light bulbs i do want to mention um flame shaped light bulbs these are so weird to me these have looked odd to me since i was like a young child i feel like it's just so silly to obviously mimic the shape of a flame in a lamp and again this is even worse if it's not a vintage piece so if you're shopping for like a chandelier or any lamp avoid these okay and they look funky also this is kind of a side note but those uh, like fake candles that you see at a lot of restaurants in North America. Those are so funny to me. Like I understand that you're not allowed to have a candle in commercial spaces in the US, but there are so many better ways to bring in like a soft glow or light to a table when you can't have a flame burning. There's even portable lamps if there's no electricity. So I don't know if people are using these in their home, but if you are, I wouldn't. There are so many cooler options to like bring a glowy light to a table okay and last but not least i already came for the plastic vines that are all over the internet and i have another bone to pick with the masses and that is those like exposed led strips that are behind everybody's tiktoks <laughs> this really might blow your mind but led strips are not meant to be seen they're meant to be put in a concealed space and then give off a very even glow that's why they're ugly and that's why there's evenly spaced small bulbs along the strip that's why it's a strip so if you have one of these in like the corner of your room mounted go take it down right now and move it to somewhere where it's concealed and also don't set it to like a color i already covered that but make it a normal color that doesn't feel like uncomfortable okay okay and that wraps up all my thoughts uh Again, if you made it to the end of the video, thank you. I really want to keep growing this community of design nerds that care about shit like this. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't and you comment and like and all of that. Also, I want to take a second to say that I'm well aware of the quality of my videos. They're getting better, I hope, week by week. Um, I'm really not like an AV YouTube guy. I'm an interior design guy. So yeah, thank you for being patient with that. And I promise all of the sort of technological details are gonna get better and be worked out. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll talk to you next week. Love you. Bye.